What do we mean with the force of mortality? Well, I'll first give you the formal definition. And as a question right away, I'm going to ask you, if you listen to my explanation of this um, force of mortality, try to think for yourself. If you look back at your course related to probability theory and statistics, then how did you call this concept in uh, these other courses? Yeah? So for our course, we're going to refer to this concept as the force of mortality. But if you're a general statistician or econometrician, you would use another term for exactly the same concept. So try to come up with this term, leave it in the chat if you can figure it out. Um, what is the equivalent of the force of mortality for a general uh, econometrician? Dev says it's the mean. It's not the mean, but maybe first listen to my explanation before starting to uh, guess. So we're going to denote this force of mortality as mu x. And what is mu x? Well, in order to explain this, we'll first look at this probability over here. So this is a conditional probability. It's the probability that given that a newborn reaches age x, what's the probability that she will die right after reaching age x? So she will die before reaching age x plus dx. And we're going to use this dx as an infinitesimal interval right after the h x, right? So the probability that you see over here is, given that you reached h x, what's the probability that you're gonna die right after reaching this h? And what we're gonna do is, we're not just gonna work with this probability, but we're gonna divide this probability by the length of the interval after h x that we're gonna consider. So I'm dividing by dx, and I'm taking the limit for dx going to zero. So I let the length of this interval become very small. So how would you call this in general econometrics or statistics? That's my question for you. We can play around with that now while I'm leaving for your uh, educated uh, guesses. We can play around with that. You could say in sort of um, loose terms that mu x multiplied with dx is then approximately equal to uh, this probability that given that you reached hx, you will die right after uh, reaching hx. Uh, mm -hmm. For a very small dx, huh, that's, the, uh, that's the explanation that I just gave. It's the mu x multiplied by dx is the probability that a life who has attained hx will die before attaining hx plus dx. That's what we mean with the force of mortality. So it's not just a probability, it's a probability divided by the length of the interval over which we consider this probability and taking the limit huh, for the length of this interval going to zero. This is a very important concept, so I'm going to manipulate it now uh, extensively. And also, if you look more at the econometric models, that are built in research um, to generate future scenarios for mortality, for example, then these econometric models are usually built, calibrated, specified at the level of the force of mortality. So it's a very, very crucial concept if you look at the econometrics on um, uh, human mortality data. We're going to manipulate the thing. Um, you can look at these steps uh, more closely after the class. So we have our conditional probability, which we can rewrite as the probability that tx is smaller than or equal to dx. That's because of the connection between the tx and the t0 that we explained uh, earlier on. And of course, the probability that tx is less than or equal to dx, that's one minus the survival function of the x-year-old evaluated in dx. This step that's the connection between my CDF of dx and my survival function. Um, and I'm going to work a little bit more on that. Any thoughts yet about how a general econometrician or statistician would call this mu x? I'm looking for two words. It's not the CDF, it's not the survival function, it's not the expected value, it's not the variance, it's something else. Okay. We give it a little bit more uh, thoughts. So let's work more. Um, uh, let's work, work a bit more on this connection between 
the mu x, let's say, and the uh, survival function of the zero year old. So um, I'm going to step from, I'm going to work with um, um, the survival function of the, of the x year old. Sorry, I was a bit confused. So let's say that I evaluate this uh, survival function in the x. Then I want to know what's the probability that the x is larger than the x, right? If I connect to the t0, then I'll get the probability that t0 is larger than x plus dx, given that t0 is larger than x. That's the connection I already explained. And what we see over here is that I then retrieve the survival function of the zero-year-old in x plus dx divided by the survival function of the zero-year-old evaluated in x. So if I want to have the mu x, the force of mortality uh, for an x-year-old, then I can also write it uh, in, the following, um, in the following way as the limit uh, for dx going to zero of one over dx multiplied then with uh, the probability that dx is going to be larger than dx. Huh? So this is a continuation of what I had on the previous uh, slide. So this is another way to write my uh, force of mortality. Sally is asking me, can't you also notate fdx instead of 1 minus sdx in slide 19? Yes, I'll go back. Yes, of course. Huh? So this is fx evaluated in dx. Uh, the only reason why I'm, well, there's no specific reason why I'm doing it here, but in the end, I want to come to a connection between both the survival function and the cumulative distribution function and this force of mortality. So that's essentially what we're going to try to, to build up. There is a force of mortality on the one hand, and you want to connect it to your survival slash cumulative distribution function of Tx on the other hand. Nagia is asking me, can you please explain again how you went to the uh, last step? And with the last step, um, uh, I think you, what you mean is, um, uh, after this, yeah, so I'm just going to continue here and if it's, um, if you still have a question afterwards, um, uh, feel free. So what we're going to do here is, um, I reached at the previous slide, I reached this expression where the force of mortality is written like this. And so if I look at one minus the survival function of an x-year-old evaluated in dx, what I now can do is using my first line here on my sheet, I can bring in the equivalent expression using the survival function of the zero-year-old. And I would need one minus this expression, right? So I would need one minus the guy over here. So if I worked it out, you'll retrieve an expression like this. So we see that the force of mortality of an x-year-old uh, can be written like this. And now, of course, another question for you. What do we recognize over here? If I look at the limit for dx going to zero of the expression that you see over here, how would you explain this um, limit here? Yeah, what do you recognize? A derivative, of course. Very good, um, Shu, Shu Yang. Yeah, the derivative of s zero. That's very good. So we recognize the derivative. We recognize the derivative of s zero evaluated in x, the derivative with respect to x. But it's the derivative with a minus, right? It's minus the derivative because, of course, for the formal definition of the derivative, I would have to flip here the s zero x and the s zero x plus dx. So eventually, using the reasoning that I build up over here, I'm starting to recognize a good, um, a good connection between the force of mortality mu x and my survival function as zero evaluated in x. So far, I'm right here, right? Does anybody see immediately how you could write the expression in blue as well? as the derivative of, or minus the derivative of, 
Would you see another way to write this? Very good, Kuhn, the logarithm, huh? the ln, uh, or the logarithm of S0x. I'll come back to that in a few, uh, in a few slides. All right, so keep the bigger picture. We introduced the concept of the force of mortality. We said the way how we picture it is uh, your X year old. We're gonna assess the probability that you're gonna die right after reaching age X. Um, and we're gonna divide that um, by the length of the interval that we consider after age X. And we're gonna let the length of this interval run to zero. That's how we formally introduced the, um, the um, force of mortality, right? And then we build up working towards a connection between our mu x and our survival function, in this case, the S0x. And the way we did it, did, we, the way we did this is by manipulating the expressions, ultimately recognizing the definition of a derivative, and that's what we are at this point. So the d is what I'm using for my uh, derivative notation, right? So I'm using d um, bar dx huh, to denote the derivative with respect to x. Now, of course, you do not only want to do this for a zero-year-old, you want to also do this more generally for an x-year-old, right? So what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to switch now again to the random variable dx. And first of all, I'm going to introduce small fx for the probability function of dx. So the probability function of dx evaluated in t, that's the derivative with respect to t of my CDF, or it is minus the derivative with respect to t of my survival function sx evaluated in t. So these are relations that you know from your probability theory and stats course, um, where we link the CDF and the survival function of a random variable, a continuous random variable, to its probability density function. Yeah? So that's what we need. Now, do keep in mind huh, that um, we could write the mu x, that's what, it, what we did on the previous uh, sheet. We can write our force of mortality at h x like this. Okay. So what do you recognize here now? Well, I'll keep the s0 x in the denominator. And here I recognize the minus the derivative of the survival function of my zero-year-old. So I can also write that as the probability density function of my zero-year-old evaluated in x. So what is the message here that my force of mortality for my x year old, sorry, yeah, the force of mortality mu x can be seen as the PDF of a zero year old evaluated in x divided by the survival function of the zero year old evaluated in x. So maybe that helps you to answer my question the question that I asked, how would a general econometrician or mathematician call this force of mortality? Does this help? Ibrahim says hazard rates. Indeed, that's what I'm looking for. So here you recognize the definition of a hazard rate. So it's a PDF divided by a survival function. And in this case, we're still working with the viewpoint of my uh, zero year old. Mm -hmm. um, so I have the PDF of the zero year old evaluated in x divided by the survival function of my zero-year-old evaluated in x. If I now continue and switch to, um, a, to, a, um, to the force of mortality um, that comes with the random variable tx, then now I'm going to use the notation mu x plus t. And I'm going to keep the x as fixed that's the age that I reached. And I'm going to consider the t to be variable. So the t is going to evolve over time. So I'm taking the viewpoint of an x-year-old now, and I want to know what's this force of mortality for this x-year-old in time point t. So the way we're going to do this is by recycling our earlier definitions. Mu x plus t is then. And the only thing I did here is I really copied what we derived earlier on, but earlier on, the x plus t was just x. Do you remember? So earlier on, I was looking at mu x 
and I have here just an x, not an x plus t. So now the only thing I'm doing is I replace the x with an x plus t, and I also replace it here, uh, the x with an x plus t. So I'm going to work with these um, expressions. And first of all, I'm going to note, well, the x is fixed, and the t is the variable that is evolving, right? So this derivative is with, with respect to t, because x is fix, fixed, right? So I'm looking at this expression, and I'm going to use my multiplication rule. Huh? So Kuhn, here you see a first application of my multiplication rule. I'm able to rewrite the survival probability of a zero-year-old in x plus t. I'm able to rewrite it as a product of these two survival probabilities. So S0 evaluated in X and SX evaluated in T. Now, of course, this first guy is not depending on T, so I can put this in front of my expression and I'm left with uh, the derivative with respect to T of the survival function of an X year old evaluated in T. And what you see over here, yeah, if you once again use your multiplication rule, you in fact recognize, recognize here one over the survival function of the x year old evaluated in t. And putting this all together, because minus the derivative of my survival function is my PDF, right? My PDF, my probability density function of the x year old evaluated in t, I again retrieve my definition of a hazard rate. I retrieve the fact that the force of mortality for an x plus t year old can be seen as the PDF evaluated in T divided by the survival function evaluated in T, right? So this is, once again, this um, force of mortality and the fact that it's in general statistics or econometri econometrics would be framed just as a hazard rate. These are two important uh, concepts which will help us to develop a further connection between the survival function and the, um, and the force of uh, mortality.